I'm Octavio Tripp, the ambassador of Mexico to Egypt, 6 uh, 2016. Born in Mexico, in Mexico City, the capital of the country, uh, in a middle class family. My child, childhood, fortunately, was very happy. Uh, I grew, grew up uh, trying to be a, a professional football player, as you can ima imagine, uh, like millions of kids around the world. So, fortunately, my relatives allowed me to practice a lot of sports during my childhood. So, fortunately, I had a very uh, happy childhood. father was a doctor in medicine and my mother was a teacher, a professor, so they uh, always uh, were trying to promote uh, studies and not only with me but with my brothers and sisters as well, but also combining such activities with a lot of sports. Sport is crucial in order to have an appropriate uh, growth and development, development in your life. So fortunately we enjoy both things, the arts and culture, but at the same time a lot of sports. But I think that my life was, as a teenager was an average life of the, the typical middle class the guy with uh, uh, trying to conquer a lot of ladies, uh, uh, practicing all kinds of sports, but at the same time trying to have an appropriate performance in my story. So combining all, all the things, one of the main advices that I received from my relatives, it was the balance, the, the balance. Try to be balanced with the different kind of activities in your life and in your background. At the end of the day, everything is possible, but with, uh, it's necessary to go step by step and always combining all the things because equilibrium balance is crucial in your life. I studied the international relations uh, later on in the most uh, relevant public university in Mexico, UNAM. Later on I got my master's degree in the Diplomatic Academy of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and finally I got a doctoral degree in public policy and government by the University of Costa Rica. This is my academic background. I really love Nagim Mahfouz, the Egyptian Nobel Prize, and it's easier, frankly speaking, to get his novels in English. So this is why this, the, 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 is, this is an additional factor in order to be attracted by uh, Mr. Mahfouz. For me, it was very interesting to, to, to read the original uh, Callejón de los Milagros, because Salma Hayek, the, the, the famous Mexican uh, actress, uh, perform this novel. He's my favorite Egyptian writer. Octavio Paz, the, the, the Nobel Prize, was uh, is one of my favorites. But if we are talking about novel, Carlos Fuentes, that is not easy. And Juan Rulfo, of course, Juan Rulfo is probably the classic of the classic from my personal point of view. So uh, this is what I can tell you about it. But my favorite probably is uh, um, adventures. So I read a lot about the Roman Empire, the Greeks, probably is my favorite thematic. Also I have read a lot about the, the Aztecs and the Mayan, talking about my own uh, civilization, my own culture. And, uh, but uh, when you are reading this kind of novels re re related to such topics, you are reading not only about the national evolution of the old of countries or old civilizations, but at the same time you are talking about war and politics, how combined and how evolved both at the same time, how the Greeks were dealing with the, the with the another empires or the Romans as well. So I really, for instance, when you are reading uh, about the Roman Empire, you are taking at the same time a some kind of political science degree because politics is always there 
in the controversies when you are talking about the evolution of the Roman Empire. So I'm multitask, leading, reading literature, but I have a special predilection for uh, adventures, if you let me to put it in, a, in that way. We are very plural, at the same end of the day we are talking about uh, more than 120 million inhabitants, so to define a national soul is not easy, but trying to do that I would say that we are, I mean the Mexicans, we are very nationalistic, so we are proud to be Mexicans, similar in some way to Egypt, and I have noticed that the Egyptians are, proud, are very proud to be Egyptian, it is similar in the case of Mexico, we are very nationalistic, but we are, uh, another main characteristic of our people is that we are very, uh, we are tire, tireless in many ways in order to survive, in order to face and, and, and defeat the challenges that you have in your life. Unfortunately, the, uh, it's, it has been repetitive in the re recent Mexican history to have economic crisis uh, uh, so in order to survive and overcome the challenges that the economic crisis used to put in your life is necessary to have a tireless spirit in order to, to look the ways how to survive and to, uh, to promote the progress not only for you but for your family. So I would say that this is a second characteristic, and a characteristic of the Mexican people, it's, uh, its spirit, its brave spirit and tireless in order to uh, look uh, uh, at for options in how to progress in life. And maybe a third characteristic is uh, that we are friendly and open to the uh, foreigners and this is another value that we, another skill that we share with the Egyptians. We are very open-minded in order to interact and to be kind with the, with the foreigners. So friendships and kind with people is another characteristic of the Mexican people. I mean, enjoying music, sports, uh, uh, soccer is almost a religion in Mexico as it is in Egypt as well. So, as you can imagine, when the World Cup is in the, in, uh, is in the near future, everybody is talking about the national team and what the expectations that we have. Always very high expectations and the reality is very hard. But uh, nevertheless, soccer is extremely attractive for most of the kids in Mexico. But also, you have many options and music as well. So, we produce uh, a lot of musicians and a lot of uh, soft power Mexico as Egypt as well. We are a, a, a world power talking about music, uh, talking about culture, so music, literature, dance and music and sports, I mean, are part of the leisures, favorite leisures of the Mexicans in, in Mexico. Mexico has a, a relevant advantage in economic terms. We are partner of the most uh, relevant uh, market in the world. I mean, we are partners of the United States and Canada. TEMEC is the acronym of this uh, economic agreement that we have, Canada, United States and Mexico. And the kind of uh, in economic interaction that exists inside uh, of this uh, economic group is impressive. You take into consideration, for instance, that our trade with the United States is more than one million per second during the whole year. So you are talking a lot, a lot, a lot of money. But it, this, it, 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 and this is an opportunity for uh, uh, another partners, uh, uh, extra regional partners, because uh, when they decide to take advantage or try to compete in the North American market, use Mexico used to be attractive for foreign investors in order to establish uh, factories or uh, to invest their in, 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 in money in, in Mexico and from Mexico to uh, get in into the American and Canadian market. So this is one of the main advantages that the Mexican market has. But then at the same time we have many uh, uh, interregional agreements with the South Asian countries 
the Pacific Alliance with the countries of Central and South America at the same time. So Mexico is uh, simultaneously a gate for to North, Amer to North America, South America and Asian markets. This is one of the main advantages that Mexico has in, in her economic terms. We are world, world powers in cultural terms. We are old uh, and uh, uh, old civilizations. So we have uh, a lot of things to offer to the world in terms in cultural terms. We have uh, pyramids. We have uh, literature. We have a lot of uh, cultural productions, talking in music or in dances. So uh, plurality maybe is the main characteristic in Mexico when you are talking about culture because Mexico is several Mexicos at the same time. In the northern part, in central Mexico and southern part of Mexico, you have different cultural expressions in music, in dance, in, in different fields. So plurality, diversity and productivity maybe are the main characteristics of Mexico in cultural terms. We have uh, beaches, we have uh, archaeological sites, uh, we have uh, relevant cities, so we have culture, we have sports in, in, in both the areas. And this is why Mexico currently is in the top 10 of the most relevant destinations in the world. Now, nowadays, for instance, Cancun, as far as I remember, is the third most uh, famous uh, destination in, in, in the world. So this is a movie, not a photography. Right now, to, uh, this is why it's very important to maintain the effort and increase the effort in order to continue attracting tourism. But nowadays, Cancun is in the third place and Mexico City as a country is in the top 10. So why? Because we have many options to offer to, to, to the world tourism. Well, we are a permanent promoter of uh, peace, cooperation and development. So this is the best way in order to get friends and we're really friends on it. So I think we really think that this is the best formula in order to have a prosperous uh, world, share uh, prosperity with, the, with this equation, with this cocktail is peace, cooperation and development. And we are very coherent promoting these the different initiatives in different fields of the United Nations systems of the regional systems as well, promoting this triangle and these kind of things in order because we really think that this is the best way in order to have shared prosperity in the world. ¿Verdad? Y no podía faltar el cónsul de México en esta fiesta. Señor cónsul, un placer tenerlo, bienvenido. Al contrario, muchas gracias por el recibimiento, un placer. ¿Le gusta el béisbol de verdad o viene nada más, eh, a, como todos los aficionados, como decimos nosotros, a solearnos un rato? Me gusta de manera natural, pero además ahora los Rangers tienen a una incorporación mexicana muy importante en Giovanni Gallardo, entonces habrá que ver cómo, cómo, cómo mejoran los Rangers esta temporada. Well, my first post was in Costa Rica, in Central America. Uh, it was my first uh, post abroad, um, I mean, out of Mexico and I started my diplomatic career as a third secretary in such a beautiful country and it was very interesting as uh, you know the uh, diplomatic career is similar in some way to the militars so you start like the initial ranks and uh, so I was uh, third but uh, very happy third secretary in Costa Rica. First, because it's your first uh, responsibility abroad, so you are very uh, interested in to be to have a good performance, and in order to be promoted, because you are beginning a, a relevant career. And at the same time, it's always very uh, interesting, very how can I say, describe it, very uh, important to represent your country abroad. So it's uh, you you feel the responsibility and it's an honor to do that 
So this is why it's so exciting uh, at the beginning. But in addition, or additionally to the professional aspects of my first post there, it was the country. The, this country is very interesting because it's one of the champions of the green cause, promoting a, a lot the ecological cause in, around the world. This is one of the most relevant countries, for instance, recovering green areas, recovering forests. So it's very interesting to be see and to, to appreciate how people is very concerned of the environment. So this is a reference for the entire world, uh, how to be successful and responsible with the climate cause. And this is why Costa Rica, among other factors, were, uh, was very interesting. No doubt that the Nobel Prize of Peace, uh, Alfonso Garcia Robles, a famous Mexican diplomat, is one of my role models in this career. Not only for me, by the way, but for most of the Mexican diplomats, Garcia Robles is like the, if you allow me the expression, like the Maradona of the Mexican diplomacy. It was a, a, an amazing diplomat, and he was the founder of the Tratado de Tlatelolco, which means not having uh, nuclear uh, weapons in Latin America. So it was a very relevant achievement that uh, men can got thanks to Garcia Robles. So no doubt that he's one of my role models in this career. I have the honor to inform you officially that the General Assembly has appointed you Secretary General. And also Mr. Butros Galli as well the very successful Egyptian diplomat that uh, his performance leading United Nations was very relevant and interesting and doing a lot mankind so uh, and I have studied a lot of his uh, productivity in this country uh, because as you can imagine Butros Ghali also is a role model for the Egyptian diplomat so I have had the chance to study in a more specific uh, detail his life and I have a strong admiration by Butros Butros Gali. To be open to all kind of cultures and societies, this is probably one of the more relevant skills that as a diplomat you must have because if you are in your in your, when you are out of your country, you will be dealing with different uh, uh, habits, uh, customs and uh, perspectives of the world. Particularly when you are uh, beyond of Latin America, for instance, because at the end of the day in Latin America we share some values, skills, as maybe it, it happens in the Arab world, you share more or less the same values with the Arabs. But uh, as a Latin American, when you are in the Arab world, when you are in, in, in Africa, when you are in South Asia, it's very important to connect with people, to connect not only with the authorities, but the, with, the, with the people in town as well. So it's uh, crucial to be open to, uh, to connect with the, this kind of culture, with different cultures, in order to be productive in your responsibility. Because if not, you will be insulated abroad, and this is not uh, part of our responsibility, our duty is to connect with authorities, with people in order to promote a fruitful and productive bilateral agenda. So, so I, would, I would say that uh, to be open to new experiences is the, one of the many skills necessary for, uh, in order to be a good diplomat. if you have the vocation in order to be a diplomat because at the end of the day it's also important to, 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 to mention that it's not easy to, to, to live out of your country especially in family terms sometimes it's difficult for your family and for you living abroad but at the same time it's a big honor to do that so if you are convinced that you want to represent your country uh, abroad it's, it's essential to have uh, this vocation but also to maintain the feeling of honor that represents to be representing your country in different countries of the world.
all the time. We try to promote prosperity as the best way in order to promote peace at the same time. If you promote uh, progress, this is the best way in order to do that because if you have a decent standard of life, uh, it, this is the best way in order to cooperate with your neighbor in terms of collaboration instead of confrontation. So the Mexi Mexico, uh, this is why uh, one of our, one of our uh, 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 principles in our constitution is to promote development cooperation. So in different international fora, we promote in a systematic way different formulas of cooperation, development cooperation. It, if you are talking in the environmental field, we do that. If you talk in the in the, the migration, at the end of the day, the best way to fight illegal migration is promoting progress. So we try to be very systematic in that way. And this is why the president of Mexico during the current administration has promoted uh, some specific plans in, in, in United Nations in order to reduce poverty or in, in order to, pro, to, to promote peace at the same time. So um, peace, uh, prosperity and cooperation again is part of is in our DNA of our foreign policy. Mexico used to be a, a society dominated by the, the macho culture, not anymore. I think that the, uh, there is a systematic uh, process of gender equality. We are very proud in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the, because of the implementation of gender in, uh, equality, we have the feminist perspective in our foreign policy. So we have a feminist foreign policy nowadays. It has been recognized by the United Nations. And, uh, uh, and this is why now we have a lot of colleagues as ambassadors of in leading positions in the midst of foreign affairs. But in general, in the Mexican society, the process of empowerment of the of, of the women are uh, evident and relevant. Still, we have many challenges ahead. But what is most important is the general trend in order to have an effective gender equality in in my country. Bueno, me han invitado a hacer una reseña sobre los resultados y características de este taller sobre el financiamiento de la cooperación sur sur. We always have different challenges uh, in, in the different uh, places that you have been posted. In Costa Rica, my main challenge was to have a good performance as a beginner in the diplomacy, to, to be effective doing what the ambassador asked me in, 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 in different fields in Costa Rica. Uh, it's not easy because our embassies used to be very small, petite embassies, so you are a multitask, so you must be effective not only in cultural but in economic and political issues as well. My second, uh, but, uh, another, in another post in, the, in Guatemala, for instance, I was consul general there. So to be consul is not easy because we are always dealing with uh, a lot of cases of protection, for instance, in different sites in your country, as a neighbors in your country or in the country where you are posted. So how to solve in an effective way the consular cases of protection was without any doubt the main challenge uh, to, to deal or to face in Guatemala. In Washington, in another post that I have there, and I was posted there as a, a, as a young diplomat and I was consular for political affairs, uh, was how to, how to promote uh, formulas of uh, cooperation with the big guy in the world, I mean with the United States, but maintaining your sovereignty and promoting at the same time uh, formulas of uh, share uh, 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 of share prosperity. I mean, win-win uh, schemes of collaboration. So, how to uh, design and how to promote this kind of formula? Sometimes it's not easy when you are dealing with a country with the power of the United States. But in professional terms, such was my main challenge in in, in that opportunity. Talking about Egypt, diversify the agenda, the, the bilateral agenda probably was the main challenge in order to make more productive 
an important the economic dimension of the economic interaction of the bilateral economic, economic with the of the uh, bilateral agenda with Egypt. Amigas y amigos, bienvenidos a Canal Egipto. A partir de hoy, una nueva opción dentro de la plataforma digital Diplomacia Cultural punto MX de la Secretaría de Relaciones Exteriores del Gobierno de México. Esta plataforma es sin duda the bilateral agenda between Mexico and Egypt is uh, positive, is plural, is fruitful but with a lot of potential still ahead. So it's positive because at the end of the day we have a, a health, uh, health interaction in different fields. Uh, we talk a lot and we cooperate a lot in the uh, multilateral issues of the global agenda, for instance. We have uh, constant uh, interactions in New York, in Geneva, or talking about the most relevant issues of the global agenda. In cultural terms, we have a strong interaction, a very successful one, by the way. And uh, the economic uh, uh, dimension of the bilateral agenda is growing. This is a very positive issue as well. So, uh, so this is why our interaction is not only positive, but fruitful. But we still have many challenges ahead. We have many productive of our bilateral agenda. It's not easy because the geographical distance and because the lack of information in many issues. But we have the political will in order to do that. We recently uh, had our bilat annual bilateral uh, meeting of uh, political discussion and it was very successful to the level of vice ministers we identify many many areas of opportunities so the general pattern the general trend of the bilateral relationship is very positive and promising i think that the economic location of both countries the uh, egypt is the gate to connect with different regions, regions of the world, Europe, Middle East and Africa at the same time. And Mexico in a similar way is the best way in order to connect with the North American market and South America and even the Asian market. So to take advantage of such economic location could be very relevant. Uh, this is why one of the most relevant uh, uh, Mexican global companies uh, identify Egypt as a possible regional hub for them. Instead of continuing exporting from Mexico or United States, they identify Egypt as a very good uh, uh, platform in order to continue producing its products since Egypt to Europe, for instance. So, so and at the end of the day, this is a win-win because they will be hiring uh, Egyptian engineers and Egyptian professionals attracting uh, euros for the Euro Egyptian companies they will be they will be more competitive so this is a benefit for the company so we are still dealing on it with the authorities of, of Gafi among others but we are very optimistic in such way so in order to conclude my, my, my answer I will tell you that the economic location of both countries are the main asset for both of them in, in such interaction. My experience here after five years and a half has been terrific, interesting and productive and frankly speaking it has not been a duty but a privilege to be posted in this beautiful country so I want to recognize in a public way to the Egyptians the opportunity to promote the bilateral cooperation with Mexico because it has been a, a tremendous and magnificent experience in this uh, wonderful country. One of the main tools in order to promote peace and prosperity in the world, again in, 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 in line with what I have said, uh, what I have elaborated before, I'm sure that diplomacy is a very relevant tool, probably the most relevant tool in order to promote uh, peace and prosperity worldwide and to avoid war. Human interaction 
so despite the fact of the technology progress some meetings virtual meetings exchange of information on, online in a simultaneous uh, way or in a very rapid way I mean diplomacy and human diplomacy is irreplaceable so in order to build trust and in order to get uh, formulas of effective collaboration is imperative first human interaction is not possible by virtual meetings to develop the, this kind of trust and chemistry personal chemistry so this is why uh, human diplomacy is irre irreplaceable in many ways and, uh, and, 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 and and this is why it's uh, imperative to continue with the traditional diplomacy not only with the traditional it's necessary to complement it and enrich such diplomacy with new technologies in order to have the human touch is irreplaceable it's imperative to continue with that way because when you are on the field you can develop this kind of mutual trust that is the first element and more relevant factor in order to develop real formulas of cooperation reinforcing diplomacy no 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 option about it so now now on we have a most uh, challenging world a more difficult international situation by virtue of the different crises in the world in ukraine and russia the pandemics that are emerging in the world so now is uh, again it's imperative to promote international cooperation in different ways and the best tool in order to do that as i have uh, mentioned before is true diplomacy is this is the best way so we must be very tolerant but at the same time very innovative in order to continue working on the diplomacy field in the diplomacy dominion in order to make possible a more prosperous and peaceful world diplomacy is imperative we cannot ignore the power the the the, the power of diplomacy in order to get uh, peace uh, and this is the most uh, important challenge that we have ahead how to promote peace and prosperity in the world and it's not the unique but the most relevant tool in order to do that is diplomacy so we must train new diplomats in order to be more effective dealing with the new challenges that are emerging but based on the premise that diplomacy is crucial in order to do that we have not invented we have not found another instrument how to deal with better that diplomacy in order to do that i'm not talking in favor of my own cause but i'm convinced that the diplomats and diplomacy are necessary in order to have a better a better world in the near future and, and, and beyond of that